Let's bring in our next guest, Rooker on the Law, John Rooker. What's going on, buddy? Ah, oh, work, work, work. How's I, it going? I would assume you guys get a little busy this time of year. We can. They're, the holidays are a unique dynamics because everybody's schedule is basically all screwed up for the holidays. Including the courts, right? The courts? Because they start pushing stuff off. Oh, that's the holiday week, right? Oh, continue it out. But, uh, but are you busy from the, hey, John, you got to get me out of here, man. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I get calls at all hours of the night. Uh, definitely uh, friends and acquaintances that have my cell phone number will call and wake me up at 3 odd in the morning. And it's like, wait, wait, can't do anything right now. you got to... You gotta Bide down your time. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, food's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> are you home? Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it works out. But the holidays are a unique dynamics. People are traveling, their schedules are messed up, and you're combining human beings that don't normally combine for the holidays. I think they call them family get togethers. Oh. And alcohol yeah. starts flowing, kinda of like that wine you got down there, you know, kinda of, It's not flowing uh, yet, John. Uh, yeah. Well, we can work on that. Cork mm -hmm. that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the wine starts going, they put the people together that don't normally, aren't normally around each other, probably for good reason. If they really want to be around each other, they would have made time. You get the sibling rivalries, the parents that disagree with certain ones, the aunts, the uncles, the Different cousins. Different opinions flowing around, football. Football, money's tight, anxiety, stress, the kids' schedules are messed up. They're used to every day you wake up, you go to school, you come home at certain times. All of a sudden, they got to find babysitters in different places to put them. And then we get domestic violence. Whoa, I, well, is that where this is all going? Christmas, domestic We're violence. We're talking about all this stuff, together. and it's going towards domestic violence. <laughs> holidays. Is, that, is domestic violence more rampant during the uh, holiday season? Most is that definitely. What you're it is in the 49er camp. <laughs> yeah, that's, and the tax monsters right around the corner, so it's stressful. You got the holidays, everything from Thanksgiving through New Year's and tax season. It's it's a mess and money. Okay, hold on now. You. You're you're a, you're you're a lawyer. Yes. You're a defense lawyer. Criminal defense attorney. You're a criminal <laughs> defense attorney, and you've chosen to speak about domestic violence today. Yes. Now, uh, domestic violence uh, happens a lot. It's a very common uh, accusation, definitely. Uh, I think, though, a lot of times people think that domestic violence is. 100% the man and hitting a woman. That is totally correct that people believe that and it's totally incorrect factually. And lots of times the guys won't turn it in. You'll see it in public. The guy says something, a joke to his girlfriend, she turns around, whack, he's like, ow, you know, you go on. But if the guy turned around and socked the girl on the shoulder, we got a whole different situation many times. Not always, but all too often. The guys don't report the domestic violence as often as the ladies are likely to. Because uh, they don't want to be looked at as weak? Looked at as weak or, come on, it didn't hurt. I mean, you, you look at me, my general size, a girl walks up, socks me in the shoulder. I hurt myself worse getting out of the shower in the morning than that's going to hurt. So why am I even going to think, make the connection to call up and call that domestic violence? But then, but then again, I mean, let's not let this get out of hand. Let, let's not let this be funny. Because domestic violence certainly isn't a funny subject. No, it's a very serious issue. It has very serious repercussions. I mean, 52 weeks of batter's treatment program on a first offense. You have to go once a week for a whole year if you're convicted of it. You can lose your gun rights for life. If you're accused of domestic violence, even if you plead to a non-domestic count, like a simple battery or simple assault, and factually the victim had a domestic relations, you lose your right to own a firearm for life. They're gone. You don't get them back, even as a misdemeanor, not even a felony. How long has that been in, that that law been in, into effect? Uh, in California, it was a it went in oh, a decade plus ago, but in 2000, I think, right around 2007 or 8, U.S. versus Hayes, they did the misdemeanor crime of domestic violence. So, if technically or factually, it was a domestic victim, even a simple assault or simple battery and you will lose your gun rights for life. Tell me why it is that you wanted to talk about this today. It's the holidays. It comes up. I've talked about DUIs in the back in, in the past. I've had probably the strongest scientific background of any attorney in the Valley. And I've really gone on that issue. But the corresponding, there's a few things that just go together. 
DUIs, domestic violence, divorce, discharge from employment. It's the four Ds, and they can happen in any order. And all too often, if one D shop pops up, the other Ds will follow. You get a DUI, you lose your job, you lose your wife, you get a divorce. You get, it goes right down the chain. And you've got to stop and analyze. If any of these problems are popping up, you might not want to add alcohol to the scene. If you're losing your job, maybe you don't want to drink for a while. You might get a DUI or a divorce to go with it. You don't want to compound your problems. Lives can be ruined in an instant, but more often, it happens over a period of time with different decisions made one after another. People can well, let's get... Not, let's not forget that you can, uh, you can drink and drive and you can kill somebody, too. So yeah, you know, that, that's bad. There's that repercussion also. Yes, the, the death repercussion. Right. It's definitely involved. But DUIs, divorce, domestic violence, discharge from employment, they just they pyramid together. They tend to travel in packs. And if any of these events come to fruition in your life, make sure you don't add the rest of them. One's bad enough. You don't need them all. But the holidays and domestic violence are a particular strong issue. They go together much like DUIs go together with the holidays. Tell, tell me different situations of a domestic violence, something that's not husband and wife. Um, cohabitators, people that have a child together, and then there's a violent act between them. That can be domestic violence. It can be somebody you just went out with once and then saw again later and got in an argument. Maybe the first date didn't go so good, and you run into each other out wherever you ran into each other in the first place, and an argument pursues, and somebody can do something as simple as a little push. You've got it. Even a missed little push. You go to push somebody and you miss a little. It's still an assault, a domestic violence assault. And the repercussions are very, very serious. Probation, jail time. So what you're saying, John, is that if you, anyone gets caught up in these types of situations, that maybe they should get a hold of John Rooker Yes. first. If you've been accused or feel you're going to be accused of domestic violence, Call down to the law firm of Nuttall and Coleman and ask for Jonathan Rooker. I will be glad to help you through the situation. And consulting with an attorney should definitely be the first step. Okay. Uh, what, what should people do uh, if they run into a police officer? Drunk or sober? Well, I, I, anytime. I, I think it's been in the news recently where there's, uh, you know, this the the, the cop uh, interactions with the different cops, and it's been really what two sided. Like you, you hear, it, no, the cop did this. No, the the, the guy did this. No, it, but I, I feel like maybe uh, the, the situation was uh, was escalated. Perspective is a lot of it. An officer, they have to be on guard because it is a dangerous job. Totally. It's not, most of the time, everything is fine. It's not going to be dangerous, but it can turn dangerous in a heartbeat. With drunks, with uh, domestic violence, domestic issues are one of the fastest that turn violent. The officer has to be on guard against a violent person taking their life. They need to go home Possibly alive. Possibly dangerous situation. But many times the person's not. And the person might know they're not dangerous, but they're being a little belligerent, a little out of line. That officer has to evaluate that and evaluate their own life right. on what they want, on how to react. It's a tough situation for everybody. Should you answer every question? I wouldn't do that. I would, but be I would. respectful. Be respectful. That's what I'm be saying. Nice. You can be respectful to them and not, and not escalate the situation. There's nothing wrong with, I'm sorry, sir, I'm not going to answer that. That is very, keep your hands up. Don't let them nervous. Thank you. I'm sorry. Be polite. They're doing their job, too. Mm -hmm. Don't be the one to escalate it. That's never a good idea. Uh, what, what, what if people have uh, old stuff floating around that they need to clear up? They really should call. I can get them back Rather on than calendar. running into the, the police officer before it's cleared up. The best thing to do is call up an attorney, let us put you back on calendar, and help you clear up the old problems. It's not that difficult. It's not going to go away. It doesn't disappear. They don't forget about you. When they call in your name, you're right there on the computer, and then you don't get to pick the time. If they find you, they take you right in. Mm -hmm. It's their time, and they hold you until it gets cleared up. But if you pick the time, hey, we can put you on calendar for next Tuesday. Does it look better? A lot better. It does. It looks like you want to clear this up. You're make, trying to make amends and take care of problems compared to run and hide from them. And then what if there's bail issues? This guy put himself back on calendar. He's here to take care of it. He's not going to run. 
or we pulled him over, he got out of the car, he took off running, we stuck the dog on him, and we drug him in kicking and screaming. Which guy is the judge going to let out on their own recognizance? Right. Probably not the one the dog had to drag in. Uh, is it expensive to hire an attorney, John? It can be, but for the most part, we do pride ourselves on being very affordable. We have to help people. If we're not getting hired to help people, if we're not affordable, then we don't get hired, and we can't do our job. So in the Valley, I'm, we're not exactly Beverly Hills, so we're very affordable. We're reasonable with our rates. We'll work with people. Occasionally, we'll do uh, payment plans if need be. If we look at the situation, we look at the person, and I know I've done even pro bono work before. I jumped in a case that was in progress in court that I didn't think was going the way it should, and I asked to sub in pro bono and did it free on the spot. You someone who's representing themselves or using a public defender, and you saw that the job wasn't getting done? They were representing themselves, okay. and it wasn't going well. It was a restraining order hearing. And you kind of saw that they're, hey, wait a minute, this, this, this isn't... Uh... They needed help. Right. They, they needed help. They didn't know how to ask questions of their own witnesses. They just wanted their witness to say what happened. And it wasn't going the way I, they weren't getting the best opportunity. I subbed in. I did the restraining order hearing. We had a brief recess. I don't think it went over well with the court, but they let me sub in. And we ended up winning the hearing. No restraining order was ordered, as it shouldn't have been in that case. It really shouldn't have been. How did they get a hold of you, John? Uh, they call 559-441-0441 or go on jonathanricker.com or call Nuttall and Coleman or nuttallcoleman.com. Awesome. Any of the above. Happy nice holidays, seeing you again. Friend. Enjoy Always that good wine. To see you. <laughs> hey, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the second hour of the buzz. Stick around.